Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today we'll be painting Deadshot from the uh, Batman Miniature Games 3rd Edition Starter Box. So we're going to get him tabletop battle ready. So these figures normally paint together, uh, come together real quick, take less than a day. But for this I primed him standard Mechanicus Gray and I used Army Painters Pure Red, Lava Orange, Matte White, Matte Black, Monster Brown, Ash Gray, Demonic Yellow, Centaur Skin, and Weapon Bronze. Then I used the P3 paints, Blood Tracker Brown, and Frostbite. Then used some uh, Citadel's Nuln Oil. I also used some Vallejo Glossy Black. That's how I paint the rims on the bases. But wonderful model. I liked how he came out. I think I bent the barrel painting him. Be careful with the barrel. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started on this guy. Now you see I've primed my guy Standard Mechanicus Gray. And now I'm going to use some Army Painter Pure Red to get the iconic costume. Now, depending on what movie or Gosh, cartoon, comic book you look at, Deadshot has slightly different coloring. I mean, the red, white, and yellow constant. So we're probably going to need two coats of the Army Painter, and we can be sloppy at this point, but we're basically going to do the outfit, all the cloth parts, as red. We're going to save the white for the hood, knee pads, boots, but we'll start picking that apart later. Just, there we go. Now I'm going to take some Army Painter Monster Brown and we're going to do this little ammo case right here. Just that. Let that red dry. Had to put a couple coats on it. Now we're going to use some Army Painter Uniform Gray. And we're going to use that on little rats there. Got two of them. One by the foot. And one hanging over here by the soda cup. Let's just uh, differentiate this gray object from the other gray objects. Next we'll use some P3 Blood Tracker Brown. Right there. And for this we're going to do all his uh, webbing. So these little pouches, holster, get the straps here. See, it's easier to do the red and then run this on the outside than you know paint this brown and try to paint the red in between and avoid pouches. So slowly working our way around the model. Up next is Matt Black from Army Painter. And what we're going to do is he has two pistols, one there, one cross draw there. We have his main weapon system right there. Then we have this secondary grenade launcher.
and then you're gonna see all these little magazines just everywhere. We're gonna get all those. Try not to touch the gray. They're stacked everywhere, so be on the lookout for them. Now I'm going to add some demonic yellow. And various depictions of Deadshot vary the amount of yellow that he has. Uh, so in the Knights Models webpage, so on the box, and they show Deadshot. They just have his gloves as yellow, so I'm going to go with that. So got a glove there, glove there, and I dip my pinky in the paint. I try to keep my pinky out of the way. So be careful not to touch anything else. Next, we'll use some Army Painter Weapon Bronze, and what we're going for. As you'll see, there's all these little shell casings down here. So some of these are from like the uh, grenade launcher. Other ones are from his uh, automatic. But what we'll do is we'll just paint them all the weapon bronze color. Just get them to stick out from the model base. I think in the uh, art, like the test one they show off, that uh, the grenades were uh, painted yellow. I didn't like that. Now I'm going to use some Army Panier Centaur Skin. What we're going to do with this is we're going to do the ears, the little face, the rats there. We're going to get their little tails. That's just a little detail piece. Just carefully just glide the brush over the top. Just jab this brush at their f little f rat faces. Oh, yeah, there we go. Now we're going to use some P3 Frostbite, and this is going to be the start of our white layer. So we're going to do the whole boot in white. Both of them. We're going to do kneecaps and strap that holds the uh, knee pad on. I'm gonna do that in white or in the frostbite. I like it because it's just a uh, white blue. Then we're gonna do shoulder pads. face mask. So let's start carefully filling in all the detail here. Make sure not to touch anything else. Now it's time for some known oil. We're going to give this model a little wash. So I shook this up and set it right there. Took a brush I've messed up. Wetted the bristles. Now we're just going to go Scrubby scrub scrub. Just a light touch on the white areas. Don't want to blanket them.
Now, let's talk a little bit more about the base of this model here. Alright, got the main guy done. Alright, so now we're going to put it extra thick. Around where the stonework is. Now you'll notice that what Deadshot stands on is more of an interpretational like a vignette piece. So it doesn't really quite blend in with the regular brickwork, but that's alright. I think some of these were designed with uh, display artists in mind, but I like to put it extra thick on the bases. See, get the little cup and the brass. You got two drinking cups here get the rats. Okay, now I normally do this right before I go to bed. This is going to take a while to dry. Alright, so we'll be back once this dries. Next what we're going to do is we're going to take some Army Painter Matte White and we're just going to put some edge highlights here. So I'm going to swipe like that down the knee guard. You see how that makes it pop out a little bit more? Ah, spun it too much. Okay, so the idea is light's coming down and so I wanted to make the armored pads different from the rest of it. Get a sense, nice, smooth, straight lines. Get a real sense that uh, there's light reflecting off of it. And push the paint around. And then what you can do is, like for these shoulder pads especially, take the a little bit of paint on the tip of the brush and just an extra coat around the edges to make it look more reflective. Get a nice like straight line there and we'll see a lot of light pools right there. Just like that. So you're able to get that sense of like a hard plastic or a hard metal. By getting nice smooth straight lines of white, actually it looks like the light, is, the photons are collecting there. So what I'm going to do is all right. So I like what I've done with the hard plastic. Just get some of the other edges here of the cloth. So I take this, it's a sharp point, but I've beat up the brush, it's getting a little soft, so I'm gonna should I do is I take this, dip it in my white, wipe a lot of the white off, and then just hit it against the boots. This will make that white pop up. Just catching the top edges here. It's Horrible for your brushes, but it acts as a very fine dry brush. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do these extra highlights in most of um, the base. Because I want the figure to stand out from the base.
Like that, and then I'm gonna get the ski mask. See, I don't want the straight lines of white like I did on the armor plate because I want to make this look like cloth. And cloth doesn't re normally reflect like that way. There we go. I don't want to blot out the detail like the sunken recesses I got from doing the wash. As you can see his eye really pops out. So does his nose. There. I think we got most of the white done the way I want. There. Now I'm going to split back to the tiny brush, and while we're at it, we're going to do. So we're going to take. All right. So we're going to take this long brush, and we're going to run it around in the paint, and then we're going to pull it out like that. And we're going to take the flat here and just run it side to side. I want nice long streaks of thin white. Make it look like the reflection of the weapon system. Let's see how that makes it pop out. Once again, dip it in there, spin and pull it like that. And then you see we've got the grenade launcher down here. So this is the one thing I'll highlight on the base. You get that cartoonish pulling of light. There. Make it look like it's glinting right there. And put another little cross. Like that. All right, so we got the white done. Uh, you could always keep doing like I'm doing, come back and fussing with it, but at some point we'll be done here. Now we're gonna go back to our pure red here. What we're gonna do is similar to what we did with the white, just pull a lot of the paint out of the brush and just run it like that. I also need, I almost forgot, yeah, we gotta do very carefully poke into his eye. Get this red optic. Like that. But I'm gonna just do some little touches of paint here. I'm gonna highlight 
Some of his peck and apples. Get a sense that light's coming down on its red armor. So let get the top of his arm. I don't know if I poured enough paint out. See, it gives them a little more three-dimensionality when you pull some of these surfaces, give them an extra layer of red. And then with that, what we're going to do if I stop hitting the lamp, get a little bit of lava orange, and then wiping most of the paint off. Just a touch of orange looking down at the model. Just little spots. You, know, you can flavor to taste here. There we go. Now you can see I've taken dead shot off the base. That's because I'm going to paint the rim here. And for that, I'm going to use Vallejo Glossy Black. You can use normal black or whatever color you want, but I like the way the glossy looks. So, what we're going to do is just run. I use also the old uh, Citadel Dry Brush just because I've loaded up with a ton of paint and I try to. No, I call it candy coating. It gives a nice, long, smooth coat. I'm gonna make sure we do the top of it. Try to keep the bruh. Say what? a lot of paint loaded onto the brush and I like to um, coat it on thickly and try to get long smooth strokes to try to prevent the appearance of brush marks and I think that does it so there's Deadshot let's see if I can get a better look at him there we go. So, paint him up, get him battle ready under a day so he looks good. Alright, well, thank you for joining us at Miniature Wilder Gaming Labs. Keep painting, and we'll see you next time.